Hi everyone. In this video, I want to walk through the basic steps to performing a fatigue analysis using SolidWorks and the simulation capability of that software. So in this model that I have loaded up, um, basically I have a, a two inch diameter rod, uh, 10 inches long, relatively simple. I've already got the simulation tab preloaded uh, up here, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and start a new study. So of my options that come up here, one of, the, one of them that I can choose is fatigue. However, a fatigue analysis first requires that we have a static analysis uh, performed and the results from that available, uh, which the fatigue analysis then uses to, to, apply, um, to do its um, calculations. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a new static analysis. And just like uh, any sort of basic sta static analysis, the first thing I need to do is define a material now, uh, in the past, I've used alloy steel as my default, but one problem is that we need to choose a material that has uh, SN curve of it, uh, data available for it. Otherwise, it won't have enough information um, to actually conduct the analysis. Now, I could define that for a material, but I'm just going to go ahead and pick uh, a material that has SN data available. And we can find it in the SOLIDWORKS database because it'll have SN in parentheses to indicate that that, that data uh, is available in the database. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this particular aluminum alloy uh, to my part. I'm going to set up a basic study first by fixing one end Next, by applying a load to the other end. And just for fun, I want to uh, do this as a, um, a downward bending direction. So I'm gonna turn on my axes, select Select that face, and I'm going to apply the load downward. Now I'm going to start with 10,000 newtons as my applied load. And that should be enough uh, to run this static analysis. So I'll go ahead and run the study. And great, I've got some results. Um, I can see here that I'm below my um, yield strength. So great, uh, in static analysis, I'm predicting that this isn't going to fail. Now I wanna go ahead and add in my fatigue analysis. So I'm gonna once again click new study, and this time I'm gonna select fatigue. Uh, it gives a few options here. Uh, this first one is just a, a variable amplitude sinusoidal basis um, like we've been talking about, and it allows me to define what I expect that to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. Under fatigue, I'm gonna click add a new event and it asks me how many cycles I want this to be. Um, a thousand cycles is what's pre-filled in here. Let's make it a hundred thousand cycles. And I wanna look here just for a second at my materials information. So now that I'm in the fatigue study, I can look at my SN curve and see what that looks like and I can see the data that goes into it. I could also edit this data if I wanted to. Um, or I could define this information if I didn't have it previously defined. But again, I chose a material that has SN data already loaded into it. So that looks fine to me. Uh, let's take a look at my event data. Again, 100,000 loads, that still looks good. Look at our results options. 
That looks good. Good. Now I think we can go ahead and run the study. All right, so the result is that it's going to give me these, these two plots here. I have a damage uh, plot. Basically, this is on a percentage basis. So what percentage of the material within each color is, is damaged? And what I'm seeing here is my blue, my bottom line is uh, 0.25, so that would be 25%. Um, my next color up is 1.66. So that means that 166% damage. So basically means there's there's damage there. Maybe more interesting to look at is this uh, life data. So this tells me that um, the different shaded areas would last um, how many cycles. And the red is, is pretty good. That just basically means there's um, no expected failure there. Where it's in blue, it's telling me that my life, uh, expected life is 6.97 times 10 to the fifth cycles. So at that point, at that number of cycles, that's when I would expect to start seeing uh, cracks forming in that area. So in these general areas where the stress is the highest, you know, which we knew from our static analysis, we would expect to see uh, fatigue beginning in those areas. And for this simple part, it's not terribly surprising that those locations with the higher stress would um, fail first in fatigue but it's kind of useful information. I also wanted to show uh, that we can change some of the results uh, for this study and how this uh, study is analyzed. So if I go under fatigue, right click and say properties, there's a few options here. And the one I wanna look at is that uh, we can change what type of alternating stress we're using. Uh, one option would be to use equivalent stress or the von Mises stress. Uh, we can also look at how that stress is um, corrected on the basis of this fatigue. And, and the one we're most familiar with in this case is the Goodman diagram. So we can go ahead and select that as an option and click OK. And now once I've done that, I would need to rerun the study. And my results look uh, slightly different come back here to fatigue. Uh, we'll notice that the numbers changed a little bit based on how we're looking at this. Um, but you know, now we have some sense of how we could compare this to our analytical calculations when we're talking about the Goodman diagram um, and the equivalent stress. So this gives us some sense of, of how long we would expect this part to last um, in terms of the number of cycles. And that's pretty useful information when we're talking about a fatigue analysis. One other thing that I want to mention that we can change or, or edit in our setup is that we can change how the cyclic loading is applied. So under my loading and the event, I can click edit definition. And here's where I can change the amplitude. Uh, I can also change what style of loading it is. So fully reversed basically means that this um, load that I've applied to it, the 10,000 newtons, will be applied in the downward direction that I originally specified, but then it'll transition up and pointed in the other direction um, for that cyclic loading. And this will have a then, of course, a mean stress of zero. So it's cycling between positive and negative uh, 10,000 Newtons. If I selected zero based uh, loading, which is the next one, basically what it would do is go up to that 10,000 Newtons and come back down to zero and cycle between 10,000 and zero. So then of course it would have a, a mean stress of 5,000 Newtons. Uh, and those are really two, the two most likely ones that we would choose uh, when we're defining uh, this analysis. So this fatigue analysis is really useful. It allows us to, to kind of compare these results against the fatigue stuff that uh, we look at from an analytical standpoint, um, using even specifically the equivalent stress, which is that von Mises stress that we've used before, as well as using the Goodman diagram, which is um, the tool that we've been using so far to uh, determine you know, when we would, when we would uh, find a part or determine if a part is going to fail under fatigue analysis. So this SOLIDWORKS simulation-based uh, information is, is good um, to compare against those analytical results that we have already calculated.
Thanks.